Hello and welcome. I'm Patrick Curtis, your host and chief monkey, and this is the Wall Street Oasis podcast. Join me as I talk to some of the community's most successful and inspirational members to gain valuable insight into different career paths and life in general. Let's get to it. In this episode, member Market Beater shares how he broke into Goldman and eventually a buy-side hedge fund role in Hong Kong with a 2.8 GPA, how much he's getting paid now, and a key piece of advice to our listeners to stay motivated. Enjoy. Market Beater, thank you so much for coming on the Wall Street Oasis podcast. Thank you. Yeah, so it'd be great if you could just give the listeners a quick uh, little summary of your background. Yeah, sure. So I'm currently a research analyst in a Hong Kong-based, equities-focused, value-driven long bias hedge fund with 900 million US dollar as under management and a 10 plus years of track record yielding an average return of 14% uh, during the uh, 10 plus years. So uh, it is also awarded by Asia Hedge as uh, the best uh, long-term performing uh, hedge fund in the 500 million to 1 billion hedge fund category in one of the past five years. So I personally uh, am a China equities generalist stationed in Hong Kong covering X-share, A-shares, or any China-related U.S.-listed ADRs. So I myself was graduated from uh, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology one of the free target local schools for uh, investment banking in Hong Kong Mm -hmm. with a finance and marketing major. So prior to my current job, I worked in an equities hedge fund as an intern in Goldman Sachs as a gap year China equity strategy analyst engaging in uh, China macro research and also quantitative trading strategy research. And another investment bank, highly reputable in uh, equities research in Asia, covering small mid cap for uh, one and a half year, and China Oil and Gas for another half year. So, so yeah, all those in, all, were all of those internships before you kind of jumped into this hedge fund role, this analyst role? Oh uh, no, no, actually, only the first hedge fund work is an internship. Got it. Okay, and so you graduated about four years ago. Is that correct? From undergrad from the Target University. Uh, yes. And so you've been working always in either the research, uh, investing side, buy side. Um, either doing well, either on the sell side of doing equity research, or now on the buy side doing hedge fund as a hedge fund analyst. Is that correct? Yes. yes so that's correct. How, how, I, yeah. Go ahead. So I was just going to ask you, how did you specifically um, position yourself for for employers so that they knew that this is kind of what you wanted to do? Was there stuff you did specifically at your target university in, in Hong Kong? Um, I can actually share a little bit of my story. Mm-hmm. So, That'd be great. Um, I, uh, so in Hong Kong, we actually have three-year university degree. And I start my internship or job hunting actually very late. I start my uh, job or internship hunting only from the spring semester of my second year. So that means I'm left with only 1.5 year for my uh, graduate job. Why did you do so that? that means, why, why did you do that? Why did you wait so long? Or is that yeah, why is that considered I, late? Yeah, because um, I'm, I'm being honest, I'm a bit stupid. <laughs> I put too much of my time in yeah. the so called student society's work. So I mm. basically didn't study. To an extent that uh, I actually, uh, there, there was one semester that I only spent like uh, one hour before the examination. Uh, so that's how horrible I was. Back then, but because I was interested in investment and uh, in economy to an extent that I actually started reading and um, trading since 16 years old. So I was like, why not trying uh, to do to 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 uh, break into the industry? So uh, I know I have a blank CV, so uh, and I have no internship basically mm-hmm. with a very low GPA. So very luckily, I got a friend who is a Wall Street Oasis member mm-hmm. and introduced me to the site. So I followed uh, many of the posts on the website and the sharing from the members and start cold calling and cold emailing. Good for you. And Good for you. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, thanks. How, for watching the oh, no worries. How bad was your GP? You said low. You said you only studied for one hour before an exam. Are you talking, I, I don't know what the scale is in Hong Kong, but I know it's zero to four. What is it like under a 3.0 GPA for US-based equivalent? Well, like, uh, 
we we also have a four point oh GPA system. Okay. And my GPA when I first started uh, job hunting mm-hmm. is actually as low as two point seven. Nice. I think you take the cake. Two point seven GPA. I love it. Okay. So you're <laughs> you're cold calling. <laughs> you're you're putting in the work to actually at least give yourself a chance at an internship. Did anybody ask you like, well, what about your GPA? Or I assume you just didn't include it on your resume. Well, I am actually honest when I'm doing cold emailing, cold calling. Yeah. I will always state that that is the major reason why I'm doing this. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, in terms of resume, I can only put it like a, a second low honor. Uh, that's all I can put it on my resume because I basically cannot lie, right? Right. So, yeah. But can you can you exclude the, the GPA or you think that looks worse? I think it looks worse. I think okay. ultimately I have I have to be screened by the uh, uh, hunter or by the right. HR guys, right? I cannot lie. Okay, yeah. so okay, so this explains a lot. So low GPA, you start, you realize I have a blank CV. I need internships. You start calling. You start just trying to mm-hmm. get any any internship you can, and you you land one. It looks like you had some success. So talk to me about that. Sure. Um, so actually, my Technically speaking, my um, cold emailing or cold calling uh, is not very successful mm-hmm. because I didn't land any internship uh, from that. Okay. Even though I cold email or cold call for like over 700 uh, professionals in Hong Kong, mm-hmm. uh, all of them are from buy side or sell side. I did have interviews uh, with them, but uh, when I finally land an internship, I actually suddenly got... Um, uh, my, my internship offer suddenly got uh, canceled like three days before I signed my contract because um, I uh, the the broker basically hired another related party's uh, son to oh. replace me as the intern. Oh, so, no. but luckily, right after that, I received an internship offer uh, from a hedge fund. Mm-hmm. And during the interview, I think I um, outperformed the other peers because I read a lot since sixteen years old. So and all, and I also have my personal training track record, which is not bad. So um, you have your personal training. Chance. You have your personal what? Trading. Trading. Personal stock oh, trading. Yeah. So you had a lot to talk about because you've been trading since you were sixteen. So you showed a lot That's of cool. passion. Yeah. Okay. So you you outperformed once you were in the interview. It was just tough to land those interviews. Yes, and Great. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that uh, it was just a three month uh, uh, semester internship, mm-hmm. and I. Just voluntarily uh, um, asked to work for free for mm-hmm. one year instead of just three months uh, on the day I signed the contracts. So they immediately, immediately adjust the contract and allow me to work one year there. Great. So after I have a one year experience, uh, it somehow caught uh, the attention of Goldman Sachs because I simply just applied uh, through online application. Mm-hmm. So after five rounds of interview, interview I landed uh, a job there. Amazing. And that's how I start my career. Yeah. Not a bad place to start, you know, from uh, low GPA to starting at Goldman Sachs. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So at Goldman, <laughs> you were you had just graduated, or this was a, also an intern an internship, or tell me about the the position there and what you were what you're doing for Goldman. Well, um, it's a it's a one year uh, analyst program. Mm-hmm. Uh, that um, I have to take deferral for it. Yeah. So during my time in Goldman, I am basically engaging in macro research and also quantitative trading strategy research. Mm-hmm. So um, to, to be more exactly, for example, I build model to forecast index um, for the next year. I um, build model to keep track of valuations by sectors mm-hmm. uh, in the China space. Mm-hmm. I also engage in a policy study uh, in China and also mm-hmm. research uh, in China, uh, sorry, uh, economy mm-hmm. research in China. So yeah, that's basically what I did in Goldman. Great. And then you knew you had to go back you, to school, that is, or you had to go, uh, it was just a one-year kind of position, so you knew you were going to have to look for another position. Uh, indeed, I received return offer and I declined that. Uh, I declined um, the offer from the strategy team, and mm-hmm. I also received another offer from uh, uh, single stock research. So what do so, you think? Uh, you, you went from low GPA, struggling to get an interview, mm-hmm. then suddenly you landed that one interview, 
or that one internship for about a year. And then all of a sudden, mm-hmm. what made you so, attra- what suddenly do you think made you so attractive is just having the, those internships on your resume or, or was, did something change? Was it just the work you were doing was really interesting? So you had some really interesting kind of experience on your resume. What, what do you think that flip was? Because it sounds like you came from nothing and then all of a sudden everyone wanted you. You're getting mm-hmm. a return offer from Goldman. You're, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I'm just trying to understand that a little bit better. So I think um, some of the worth mentioning part include uh, obviously the, the, the things I have mentioned, uh, mm-hmm. the stock trading uh, record. Yep. I actually put that on my resume. And second thing is uh, I read a lot. So I uh, actually have a favorite readings list on my resume as well. Mm. So uh, and actually that helps a lot because uh, during the first round of my Goldman interview, uh, the interviewer actually told me that I got picked because of the favorite reading list. How many and, things do you include um, on the favorite reading list? How many? Around five to six books, uh, spanning mm-hmm. across uh, macro books, uh, stock trading books, and also um, politics books. Interesting. Interesting. So you're kind of showing up a geopolitical uh, intellectual curiosity such that they think, oh, this, this person really gets it. Um, yes. And interesting. I think my readings actually helped uh, in the actual interviews as well. Um, because, uh, for example, I got asked in the first round uh, about uh, the economies of seven uh, countries in Asia, mm-hmm. and I actually uh, can answer very thoroughly. And the interview actually, after I landed uh, my job, he actually said that is the part that impressed them the most. Right. Yeah. So that I think the readings works as well. For sure. Do you mind sharing some of those books? Uh, maybe we can put it in the show notes after. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, uh, yeah. I think um, one of the books that I would recommend is mm-hmm. definitely uh, Howard Marks' uh, Most Important Things. Mm-hmm. Um, Great. This, uh, this is a book that talks about trading philosophies. And uh, there's another book called, uh, uh, written by um, the chief uh, columnist in Financial Times, Martin Wolf, uh-huh. called Fixing the Global Finance. So that is actually a a book that talks about uh, the financial financial crisis and also um, the importance of U.S. dollar uh, among the global economy, which allows you to actually uh, study uh, all of the major economies in the world. And finally, I will also like to recommend um, all the books written by Alan Greenspan mm-hmm. and also Ben Bernanke, because uh, basically it's simple. They are the uh, modern monetary policy designers. So yeah. what they said, uh, what they read, uh, what uh, what they wrote inside the books are basically uh, what is really happening in the real world and the most yeah. practical knowledge they are. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you for that. So yeah. So tell me. Let's go back to your story. So you're mm-hmm. you're getting offers um, to return to Goldman, but you're thinking I'm going to probably jump. Why did you decide you didn't want to go work at the strat? I think you said the strategy team gave you an offer. Why did you decide? Hey, yeah. I actually want to go do something else. Um. For the strategy role, I think um, I have started to realize that in terms of career, uh, it's hard to have a uh, board exit office. So what I mean is that um, a typical career pathway for a strategy analyst is basically staying in sell side and one day jumping to the buy side, but only uh, as a strategy analyst. So for buy side strategy analysts, they focus on portfolio allocation. Mm-hmm. And as you can imagine, they should be only available in law only funds. So uh, funds. it's actually mm-hmm. a kind of narrow uh, exit ops. Got it. So and the strategy, also, so so yeah. for, just so I I understand this. So the strategy analyst, if you start there, typically the exit opportunities are for long only funds and for more for portfolio allocation, not direct investing. Yeah, that's correct. Got it. Okay. So you wanted to stay, you wanted to be in a position where you actually were on the buy side. You had it exit ops to the buy side where you're making actual long and short decisions, direct direct investments. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, sorry. And then I also declined the single stock research uh, offer, mm-hmm. but that's more of a, a realistic uh, uh, reason because uh, they have, uh, they only offer the internship, retu- uh, sorry, uh, the return offer yep. for uh, equity research division in Singapore. In Singapore. And okay. with a very low pay back then. Okay, and so, so you wanted to stay uh, in Hong Kong. Got, yep. Yeah, and yeah, and I got convinced by seniors not to take that actually. Okay. Great. Yeah. So okay. that's how it goes. Yeah. 
Okay, great. So yeah, so uh, continue. Tell me, continue your story. So what's the what was next, and um, how did that progress? And then yeah, I'd love to hear more about the transitions when you when you understood it was time to leave and, and your next step. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So after uh, declining the offers, I'm I obviously need to find my graduate job, and very luckily, my cold calling and cold emailing finally works. <laughs> uh, one of one of my um, uh, network who I'm very close with uh, keep contacting in the past three years uh, when I'm looking for jobs uh, actually contacted me that um, for for drinks so we talk about that uh, I'm looking for a job so he said oh actually we are hiring uh, so why not you, you you give a shot so that's how I landed my first job great and so tell me about that position what were you doing there and specifically um you know did you like it what did you like about it mm -hmm. um, what didn't you like mm -hmm. about it mm -hmm. so uh it's a sales and research job in a, uh i would say a more regional investment bank but i still like it a lot mm -hmm. because it's actually highly reputable in equities research it's basically an investment bank that specialized in equities research that's how they find themselves yeah so uh i'm still glad to join the team so um, I was covering small mid cap for 1.5 years and oil and gas for another half year before uh, going to my current job. So it's actually kind of fun uh, to cover small mid cap because you do not have sector focus. You won't get bored by uh, uh, your own sector. Instead, you are always finding new ideas. And sometimes you can um, look, uh, this is some very creepy companies. So it's actually a very fun experience uh, to keep on working on new ideas and finding some uh, double baggers for clients. Yeah, so for it's sure. It's actually quite uh, unusual research experience. So you're, yeah. you're looking at mid and small caps in Hong Kong, China, China, China oil and gas. You're kind of getting experience across a wide r range of industries, which is fun. It's interesting. Yeah. So, so why leave? Why did you feel like there, you know, in this equity research role, do you feel like you still wanted to get buy side? It sounds like eventually mm -hmm. and so was that yeah. that's so, the, was that the impetus when did you start looking how did you kind of make a, you know that next transition mm -hmm. so at first uh i i'm taking advice from say one some some of the members on wso that uh maybe i should take coverage first and then jumping to buy side but then i encounter a problem that uh, the company itself is actually uh, undergoing some copy restructuring so i feel and and also because of uh, the nifi too I feel uh, a bit um, insecure about my job or my career in sales side in medium term to long term. Mm -hmm. So that's why I start job hunting uh, in buy side. And luckily, I find one and landed my current job. And so it sounds like, you know, you were really good at these recruiting. Can, can you t dive in a little bit more on specifically, you know, luckily you found a buy side job. It sounds, you make it sound easy. How did you kind of what was that process like in Hong Kong? We don't have many guests that mm -hmm. are in Hong Kong, so I'd love to hear about how that typically goes. Is there was there a set time frame that the hedge funds typically recruit at, or the private equity funds? Mm -hmm. Were you looking at just hedge funds, I assume, in, in trading type roles? Yep. Um, and I'd love to yep. hear more info on that. Well, I think it's uh, kind of similar with what is happening in the US right now. So I think uh, networking matters a lot uh, for buy side roles. And headhunters uh, also matter a lot in terms of buy side roles. Mm -hmm. So I landed my job through uh, the introduction of a headhunter that I keep close contact with. And I think keeping co close contact with uh, some of the capable buy side recruiters is actually very important uh, in terms of uh, finding a buy side role in Hong Kong. So yeah, I think that's that's all. Are there a set number of recruiters there that are well known, or is it kind of more dispersed? Like, is there three or four that are really well known, and you have to be in touch with those, or are there like fifty, and you just have to choose one, or how does that work? Well, yeah, I think I think uh, the headhunter landscape is basically like U.S. You can hear some uh, uh, headhunter firm like Robert Half, mm -hmm. uh, etc. So, uh, but there are also some independent headhunters who uh, may be working in uh, the huge um, uh, headhunter firms for like twenty years and come out and set up their own company mm -hmm. so uh, i actually like them more because um, they are more motivated they actually serve juniors better mm -hmm. uh, uh, because uh, as you can see uh, as you as you can imagine 
the headhunters in uh, large uh, headhunter firms, they only look at commission. Right. So for senior positions, they got shared by uh, shared with more commissions, right? So uh, only only because uh, only by this kind of uh, junior headhunters who just start their uh, headhunter firm uh, will actually pay more attention to you. So, so I actually, I actually got some bad experience. Like um, I contact with a headhunter in a big uh, headhunter firm, mm-hmm. and I was actually contacted by the company that I'm going to be interviewed. That I'm actually having an interview, like uh, the day, that 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 day. Yeah. So I was later found that the headhunter actually did not inform me uh, about the this round of inter- interview. Oh my gosh. Uh, so yeah. So but it is kind of hard to imagine. It comes from a reputable headhunting firm. So that's why um, I think finding a good headhunter is really important. And obviously, networking is another very important element. So this specific headhunter that eventually helped you get this role, was it something you had built a relationship beforehand, or was it something where when you were started looking, you had you had you felt like you had less job security in your sell side equity research role? So did you start reaching out proactively to headhunters, or they had you had already been in discussions with them? Well, I think uh, it first start with uh, I actively looking for jobs. Mm-hmm. So um, usually the headhunters will reply for my job application request. But then I'll also actively uh, keep communicating with them. For mm-hmm. example, asking uh, how is the job market looking like? Is there any new new jobs? And also asking them to have a chat, etc., etc., to build a better relationship than just cold calling. Yeah. So. Uh, that's actually very important because uh, apart from the job seeking side, I actually got shared by a lot of the the firm's uh, background and also the culture, which allows me to pick uh, which is the best fitted uh, buy side uh, that I can uh, to to myself. Yeah. For example, uh, there could be reputable firms, but actually with a very hostile culture. Mm-hmm. There could be firms with huge AUM, but actually with a lot of risk parameters that you can actually not really trade or do a stock pitching, etc. Yeah. So actually, it's uh, pretty rewarding to invest in building relationship with headhunters as well. You felt like they had some inside knowledge of what the firms were specifically like, and they they helped guide you um, once you built those relationships. Yeah, that's correct. And so, how many yeah. how many headhunters do you think you actually met in person, or and how many just was you know relationships over the phone? And were these all just in Hong Kong? Yeah, most are in Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. And I think I met like eight to nine headhunters uh, face-to-face. Oh, wow. That's uh, a lot. But over mm-hmm. the phone, I, I think it's like 20. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. So, yeah. yeah you, that's so, a lot. Yeah. so you had a pretty good sense of the overall market on you know hedge funds in, in Hong Kong, mm-hmm. basically, once you mm-hmm. once you um, mm-hmm. kind of were ready to ready to start looking so then tell me a little bit about why um how that process went so how many interviews did you go through for your current firm and then specifically um how was the interview pro- what was the interview process like um for my current role i actually spent half a year just for interviews wow. i got through nine rounds of interviews so uh it's a it's, it's still a hedge fund uh so the team is pretty small, mm-hmm. so they try to find the best fitted uh, candidate. Um, so they went through a lot of tests. For example, um, uh, the first round is basically a face-to-face uh, brief introduction. Mm-hmm. Starting from the second round is the technical round. They have a modeling test. Uh, is is a ASEAN company. So they basically make sure that uh, it's not something you covered before. They ask you to do stock pitching, modeling. Uh, and presentation in the third round. Mm-hmm. So uh, after like lots of questions in the third round, they will ask you to follow up with the fourth round interviews and um, and give you some uh, catalyst and ask you to qualify by models. So it's like another round of modeling test. The, sorry, you after, said they'll ask you to quantify caplet. What what did you say? Capitalist. Capitalist. Yeah. Oh, capitalist. So, uh, <laughs> Catalyst, catalyst. So oh, catalyst. Example, oh, catalyst. Got uh, it. Event A is going to happen. Yeah. Uh, event B is going to happen. So, what is the stock valuation looking like if event A doesn't happen, but event B? Happens were, were those catalysts? Were those catalysts more industry specific or more macro? Uh, 
uh, very industry specific. I would say. Okay, got it. For okay. example, they ask like a taxation issue, exactly. Got it. Okay, so yeah, so you get through the fourth round of interviews. Then what happens? Yep. Then for the rest of the rounds, is um, interfering with uh, the other PMs. Uh, mm -hmm. Our firm has has four PMs, mm -hmm. and finally the CIO. So they make sure that uh, on the right field, while they are actually considering more candidates. Uh, they make they, they actually pay a lot of attention on whether my personality fits in the team, right? Uh, instead of just my tentacles uh, in the in the in the remaining five rounds. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. So it took a six month. It was a six month process. Do you have an idea of how many other candidates they looked at? They told me they start from uh, thirty candidates, mm -hmm. and uh, more importantly, they consider both juniors and uh, seniors. So, for example, I was I, I was told that they they are considering another PM who has a ten year trading track record already. Mm -hmm. And you were up so against that person. Canada. Wow! So yeah, you you were being considered for the senior PM role or a PM role, basically. Uh, no, actually, uh, I think it's more like um, their internal consideration, for example, budget mm -hmm. or whether they need a support analyst or just a new PM, and whether they have uh, coverage for that new PM. Got so it. I think at last they decided to hire a junior. That's why they picked me from the junior pool. Got it. Makes sense. <clears throat> are you comfortable sharing a range of pay from your Goldman internship all the way up through what you have now? Are you are you comfortable sharing just a wide range to the listeners? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. That, so that, for Goldman's role, it should be around. Uh, it should be around. Let me let think. Around uh, eighty thousand. Uh, mm -hmm. US dollar per annum. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And um, for my current role, it, current role is around one hundred to one hundred and twenty uh, thousand US dollar per annum. That's and great. the bonus is discretionary, depending on stock call, success rate, and also final call performance. So very typical hedge fund fee structure. And in terms of like upside, how how big could that bonus be? Uh, not sure. Yeah. So, you don't know yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. I wish I could know. Yeah. Um, so, okay. And then specifically, um, your day to day, I'd love to just hear, are you enjoying it? What's next for you? Are you enjoying the, the role currently? Do you feel like you'll be there for a few years more? Uh, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I enjoy the role. Uh, I actually like, uh, my life in my side. I got a lot of interesting stories just to stay in my side. Mm -hmm. So, and the team culture itself is good. I think it fits me a lot. Uh, it's also a stable platform, so uh, I don't think I will switch role in say at least in the next three to five years. And if kind of, more. and do you think there's a potential room for you to eventually become a PM there? Yeah, absolutely. That's great, and I guess that depends on performance, right, and how well you do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great, man. Well, this has been really interesting. I, I didn't, you know, I think you're our first guest where um, you work in the hedge fund buy side space in Hong Kong. So it's it's great to get you on oh. on the pod. Um, anything else you'd like to share with the guests before we call it? Or any advice to your younger self that you uh, would have given? Oh, well, yeah, sure. Uh, I think uh, my advice would be uh, always try to stay confident because I understand that um, the job hunting or the internship experience, internship um, hunting experience is always filled with failures. Uh, that's my experience as well. Uh, I got even worse experience than just uh, failing an internship uh, uh, interview. For example, I got uh, called by called to a trading floor and mocked by the traders uh, for my blank CV, etc. So, I, I mean, uh, but these kind of bad things will always happen and you will always got rejected and you will got rejected to a point that you will certainly doubt whether you're as good as you think. Mm -hmm. But actually, uh, if you stay confident, you will stay motivated and you will keep doing more preparation and getting better. And that's the key point that you can land uh, your next job and also to pursue what you want to pursue. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you. I think we'll leave it on that great note. Um, really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so much. And thanks to you, my listeners at Wall Street Oasis. If you have any suggestions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to send them my way, patrick at wallstreetoasis.com. Until next time.